So yesterday I mentioned I'm going to be going through this bug out bag. Haven't been in it in a year and I've kind of been slacking. So I need to go through this bag, check out what's in it, and maybe rethink some of the things I have in it because it's kind of heavy. It's around 53 pounds. So what we're going to do today is go through each section and check out what's in there and either remove or refresh what we need to do. So let's check it out. All right, so yesterday I reviewed a couple, uh, this little pouch, and last week I reviewed this bag. What we're going to be doing in here is moving some stuff around. It's pretty well compartmentalized inside in the main section, but um, there are some things that I'd like to kind of change the compartment it's in or maybe make things a little bit easier to get at. Also, too, this bag hasn't been gone through in about a year, um, so I'm going to be checking on the food. It's mostly freeze-dried stuff, so I know it's probably okay. Still going to check on it. Still going to add a few things here and there, and maybe take away some things because thinking logically about what some of the stuff I have in here, it's stuff I may never use in a bug out situation. So first thing we're going to do is do this, do all the pockets on the outside and have another side pocket over there. So I'm going to unpack those. We're going to take a look at what's inside of them, check them out and see if anything needs to be replaced or maybe removed. All right. So we've emptied out all the pockets on the outside of the bag. And I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of stuff in here that needs replacing and or probably needs to be removed. Uh, the first thing I was looking at here is this flare gun, and this just shoots flares. So I'm thinking, you know, there's really not many opportunities where I'm going to be using something like this. Uh, really can't think of a use for it, and I have a pen flare gun in my vehicle at all times. 99% of the time, I'd probably be bugging out in my vehicle. So while it kind of looks cool, it really isn't necessary. I'm probably going to take it out of here, uh, so we're going to remove that to start with. Next thing up is my electronics, okay? It's kind of mishmashed everywhere here. I kind of threw everything down here quickly. Now, in here I do have a shortwave radio with a decent long wire antenna. Let's get all this stuff out of the way here. Probably should have fucked this out before I did it, right? <laughs> many, many years ago, I reviewed this little antenna. Uh, this little radio, I mean. And it is an awesome little shortwave AM, FM sideband radio. Very cool little system. Uh, however, it does run on batteries. And I had some batteries stored in there. Well, what do you think happened? So, these batteries are no good. Now, I'm thinking to myself, I have a little miniature solar panel in this bag. And that's this little guy here. And he does work quite well. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I should probably stick with rechargeable batteries in this in some way. Where I can recharge them via solar. So, that's probably what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to take those batteries out. Dump them. The, uh... Double A, the triple A here's are fine, but these are fairly new. I got these, I don't know, a couple months ago. So the triple A's are fine. We're going to leave those in there. These, unknown origin, I'm going to take them out. Don't know where they go come from. And I'm going to put my rechargeables in here. I do have the AM antenna for this particular radio. I do have a set of headphones in case I have to listen to this radio quietly. And I do have, like I said, that clip-on antenna that clips onto the, uh, onto the um, end of the, uh, there it is, clips on the end of the antenna. And you hang this up, and there's your antenna. So, as far as communications goes, I only have one-way communications with this. And that's fine. That's okay for now. But we are going to do rechargeables for it, and we're going to carry the little mini recharger. I do have this little panel here. All in all, this is going to be perfect. A whole lot easier. I'm also going to look and see in my storeroom to see if I have a bigger one. Um, I know doing these reviews, I forget what I have in there, honestly. So I'm going to look and see if I have a little bit of a bigger panel, because that is a small panel. However, it does work very well. So we know we got to do that, okay? I do have some insect repellent here, and we will keep that. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to move the stuff I'm keeping over to the side here and move the stuff we're looking at in here. We're going to keep this or look for a bigger one, so that goes over here. Now, the next step, okay, and I wanted to address this for a while now because I've been thinking about this a lot, is I have this uh, hatchet in here. That's a decent little Fiskars hatchet, okay? Nothing really wrong with it. However, how many times am I going to use this out in the desert? Probably not as much as I'd use a knife or, if I can find it in here, my saw. This thing's freaking heavy, okay? Very good hatchet and probably will go into use somewhere else, but very, very heavy. And I really don't think I'm going to be using it all that much, as opposed to just carrying a saw and a decent knife. Now, the knife we'll get into next. So I think this is going to go out, too. Um, I really don't have a use for it in the Nevada desert. Um, what am I going to do? Chop down, you know, bushes? <laughs> I mean... 
it's just not something I'd use as much as I'd use that. So we're probably going to stick with that and cut out a good five or six pounds with that hatchet there. Next up is this guy here, okay? Now, if you guys might remember many, many years ago, when I first started my channel, I was reviewing a lot of Schrade products. And this is one of their Schrade knives. This is a very nice knife. And you'll notice the design on this. I did that with mustard, believe it or not. You strip off all the coating, and you soak it, and you clean it up, and you put some mustard on it, and it makes this nice little mustard patina. However, this is an extremely heavy, big knife. I'm not entirely sure I want to be using such a big, heavy knife in a go bag. Um, maybe I want something a little bit lighter. Still be able to do a lot of camp tasks and bushcraft tasks, but it'll be a whole lot lighter. So I'm thinking about opting for this little guy here, okay? This little one is made by BPS Knives, made in Ukraine, okay? And this is an awesome little knife, and it's way, way lighter than this. Now, can it bust through a thousand tons of uh, wood and baton it? Probably, but this one might be a little bit faster. The fact of the matter is, is, I'm going for a little bit of a compromise here. I want something a little bit lighter. I've had this in this bag since the day I got this bag started. And honestly, I like it, but I'd like to use it more in the channel and keep that for a bug out knife. So, we're going to switch these out too. Now in here, it does come with a sharpening stone. And being that I have plenty of sharpening stuff in this particular kit, I really don't need that. It also comes with a ferro rod, which I already have in here in the fire kit, so we're not going to worry about that. And we're just going to take this one and use it for something else. It's a nice knife, really great knife, but very, very, very heavy. This thing weighs a ton compared to this. So we're going to be switching it out with that. It even comes with its own little um, sheath. And by the way, folks, if I don't know that they're producing right now with obviously what's going on in the world, but when things settle back down to normal in Ukraine, if you can get your hands on one of these, these are amazing knives. These are really, really nice. Very well made, full tank construction, nice walnut grips on them. I think it's olive wood, actually, grips on them. Scales are olive wood. So, definitely a whole lot lighter and a whole lot better. And I really feel with this and this, I'm pretty well equipped to cut down most anything I'm going to run into in the desert. Okay? Let's get rid of these batteries. I'm going to replace those when we come back. All right, so next up, got that taken care of. I do keep an extra pair of prescription glasses in here. They'll stay the same because my prescription stayed the same. Silcock key, if you guys have ever seen those doors on the sides of buildings. Little small doors, maybe about this big. That's what these are for. In an emergency, now I don't suggest you go out and do this to test it on the side of a building with a security standing over you. In an emergency, they're an excellent source of water. I can take this, open up that door, open up the uh, faucet, and fill up my water if I need to. That's why they're handy to have. However, if you are going to test out one of these, please ask permission from the building owner before you do. So we'll be keeping that. The gloves, definitely be keeping those. I have two things of paracord here. And the reason I switched from the, uh, the black to the kind of desert tan is because black shows up very, very well in the desert. And I may not want to show up very well in the desert. I may want to keep my area hidden. So I may use this. But I'll keep both of these. They're fairly light. Next up, a little sharpening tool here. This works very, very well with knives. You just run it down kind of like a sharpening steel and you will get a really nice edge, and to hone that edge when I'm done, many years ago I bought a big, huge, long leather belt from Goodwill for a buck, and I cut a little piece of strop out of it. So I can strop my knives if I need to on the ends. I don't have any polishing compound on it. I'll probably add a little bit of that, and it does a very, very good job. I mean, this knife is already sharp, but it definitely works very, very well. So I'm going to move in the camera a little bit, and we'll finish up with what's on the counter, because I see it's kind of dark in this area here. Let me move in the camera, and we'll finish up what's here. Now, perhaps the biggest thing that weighs a lot in my bag um, is something I really do want to keep, because I might be using it to use it to dig a fi to go to fire pit or trench an area around my tent, and that is this small little shovel. Now, I know these things, people have tested them for years on, on YouTube, and they've been bent in garbage, and this thing has definitely proven itself. I have used this bunches of times, I've used it in videos, I've used it when camping, it's all scratched up, but the darn thing works and won't break on me, and I like that. Now, it does have a compass that actually seems to be working, so that's kind of cool too, but that's not really why I have it. I have it because I know this thing works. It also has a little extra area in here if I wanted to maybe put some tinder or whatever inside, but really, my goal with this is just for a small little 
camp shovel. If I want to dig a Dakota fire pit, maybe I want the smoke to stay down, not be noticed. Or if I want to just keep myself trenched around my tent or any other digging tasks I need. Also, too, the edge on this is fairly sharp and can be sharpened if I need to cut into something. And I have done it with this, and I know it will hold up to it. So we're definitely keeping that. Again, it's a little bit of a heavy tool, but it's lighter than most shovels, to be honest with you. So we're going to be keeping that. Now, next up, we get into these. These are just my cloths, whatever I need to wash with. I'll keep those, of course. Uh, I don't know why I had these in here. Some ratty old zip ties. We're going to replace these with some nice new ones. Maybe put a little duct tape around it like I did here. <laughs> We're going to replace those with at least some hefty ones. I do have uh, earplugs. Uh, good for sleeping. Again, if you're sleeping in the wild and you want to keep your hearing and your sense of hearing around you, you don't want these. But if maybe you're stuck in a shelter somewhere, maybe you're stuck with other people, maybe you're stuck with somebody that snores and you want to get some sleep, handy to have. Now we're moving on to the food. Now I know the freeze-dried food is all good because this is all stuff that I've reviewed recently, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, however, I do have these peanuts in here. And I'm wondering, because these are old. I'm going to tell you straight up, I know these are old. I'm wondering if they're still um, good or if they've kind of gone bad. So we're going to open one up and check it out. They make a handy snack. Yeah, they're nasty. Yuck. <laughs> So we're going to pitch those out. I'll probably add another freeze-dried meal in there, just for good measure. These things taste like mothballs. They're nasty. <laughs> so, lastly, I have a little bit of a cover here. Um, good for dis disguising a tent, whatever, uh, your location. Maybe keeping cool, building a little shade. So we'll be keeping that in there. I am going to refold it up, but we're going to be pitching that stuff out. So, let me go get the replacement stuff. We'll put it back in the bag, and then we'll dig into the main section of the bag and see what's inside. Now, I did forget one thing, and that's because it fell on the floor when I first opened the bag. So let me grab it for you. These are a cheap pair of binoculars. I'm not sure I'm going to be keeping these in the bag. I might. Um, honestly, I kind of like having a pair of binoculars. These are inexpensive, but they do work. And just for spotting, you know, looking ahead of yourself, again... My vehicle has a very nice pair of binoculars in it, but if I'm bugging out on foot, maybe I want to take these. So I'll probably keep them. Let's uh, clean up my mess here, and let's uh, replace some stuff and get into the next section. All right, so a quick walkthrough of what I've replaced. Um, you guys remember that tiny little 5-watt panel? We got rid of that. I put the E-Scene 10 water in here. I have my rechargeable batteries in here in the pack and back. It does have carabiners to hang it. It is a... 10 watt panel it, it will do a whole lot better i think it's actually a 20 watt panel i have to check my video on it i have used it in the past though it does work well i took a single usb powered battery charger and i did test this outside just a few minutes ago to make sure that it works you want to make sure all your gear works you don't want to just throw it in your bag and be like oh, i hope it works you know so i took it outside it does charge the batteries very very well they're fully charged um we do have the radio we're keeping that i'm going to keep one thing at triple a's here just in case I do have the antenna and the, and the uh, AM antenna and the shortwave antenna for the radio. And that, that'll be staying. Everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, we did replace the knife with the BPS knives. I did upgrade the carabiners to, uh, the carabiners, I did upgrade the zip ties to real zip ties. So, definitely happy with that. Everything else is staying the same, but we reduced a lot of weight out of this thing. Okay? I mean, I'm carrying it around an axe, a flare gun. I mean, none of that stuff is what I'm going to use when I'm in a bug out situation, at least not most likely. I want to stick with the most likely stuff that I'm going to be using in a bug out situation. So let's get all this back in the bag and then we'll take on the main compartment. And the only reason I don't have the bag up here is because I don't have enough room for the bag and all the gear. Then we'll take on the main compartment and that's where probably moving some stuff around and putting it in these will come into play. So let's get to it. Well, I can tell you it's all back in there and it's all a whole lot lighter. Now remember, that's just this, 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 and the other pack on the other side. I didn't undo this one because it's got a water filter in here. I literally just put in a month ago. Perfectly fine, brand new water filter. So there's nothing wrong with that. However, on the outside of there, I had one of those chem lights. It is always good to test them out. So I have one on the other side that I know is new. This one was looking a little discolored, so I snapped it. And it's still glowing. It still works. I like a colored one for one side. The other side is a light one. So this one's going to be the typical yellow. And we're just going to put that right back into its place there. 
down the side. And yeah, it might fall out. I understand that. But, you know, it's in there pretty good. Fairly decent. And we've tested our gear. We know this one still works. You know, yeah, I've used it up, but we know it worked. So the next part of the bag is going to be the main part of the bag. What's inside here. And that could definitely, probably, use a little bit of a diet as to what's inside of it. So we're going to check that out and see what's in there. And uh, once I get all that stuff out, we're going to take the bag off the table, put it on the counter for everybody to see what's there, and we'll decide what needs to be replaced, what needs to be repacked, could I do things differently, and we'll take a look at what's in there. All right, so the first thing I see is I got a whole lot of freeze-dried food in that bag. <laughs> okay, I do have a few more entrees here. I did have one, let me tell you this. We're going to actually eat this one up. Um, this is extremely old. I don't know if it has a date on it or anything. You can tell by the cover, the Backpacker's Pantry. You can also tell by the price and the location where I purchased this. $2.95, okay? It was also purchased in Outdoor World. I haven't shopped in Outdoor World since 2000 and probably two. Okay, so we're going to try it out on the channel. We'll test it and see if it's any good. Uh, I'm sure it's fine. I'd rather put fresh stuff in, and I did. I put another macaroni and cheese into the front compartment that's fresh. So I'm not too worried about this one. I think this one we're going to just kind of um, test out in the channel so we'll have the same amount of food in the bag. Um, right now, first off, this is our first aid kit. Now, this looks like a store-bought first aid kit. And what do I always tell you? Don't rely on store-bought first aid kits. Well, it is, but it's been greatly enhanced. Okay, It's got a, any kind of medication I need in there. I believe it has some antibiotics. It's, uh, it's uh, packed full. Okay, Got tons and tons of stuff in there. And one of the things I'm going to be doing with this is putting it into a roll-up and going through what's in there, because I have a lot of excess in there, and maybe removing some stuff and adding fresh and restoring and doing that. Next up, socks. S-O-C-K-S. You folks that speak Spanish will get that. <laughs> uh, I've got socks in there. We have a titanium kit here. This is a little cook kit, Boundless Voyage. The interesting thing about this is this is kind of like the, uh, gosh, what is it, the, um, the Stanley um, version of the little cook kit. And in here, I don't have much. I have uh, one cup. I do have a can opener, just in case. Of course, it just went that way. You get the idea. It's a little T38 can opener. I'll pick it up when the video ends. And this does go into a stuff sack. All right, in here is a little bit of everything, and we're going to organize this too. This is a little bit of a fire kit slash cooking kit slash the other stove I have for in here. <laughs> this has a lot of stuff in it. So we're going to go through here and kind of look at it too. Um, in here I do have a lighter that I have sealed up. Fluid's still in it. That's good. I do have a quick wet fire. These things are awesome. If you get the chance to buy them, definitely check them out. I do have a little propane isobutane canister. And I do have this little Cobia stove. Um, I gave myself options with this kit. I have a wood-burning stove in here and a little isobutane stove. Uh, granted, this is going to be hard to restock in a disaster or SHTF or whatever. But I do have a wood-burning stove in there. We'll show you that in a minute. This is the little isobutane mini stove. And you'll just flip the wings up like that and put your pot on top. So I have tested this out. Some people had trouble with the older ones that were having trouble with the, uh, the regulator on it. This thing works fine for me. It's from BRS. It's the original titanium mini stove. Um, we have that there. I think what we're going to do is consolidate a fire kit and kind of move out of this stuff here and put it all in one place. I do have an uh, Kershaw eating tool. It's got a little fork and a spoon. Can clip on the side of my bag if I want it, I guess. UCO storm matches. These things are awesome. Sewing kit, blanket, ferro rod. Now, this is a little UST ferro rod. And it actually works very, very well. Uh, I'm really impressed with it once you get the, the black coating off. Um, I've used, I have, there it is. There's my side where I've got the coating off. I've used this in the past and it works very, very, very well. I don't know what's in this, but it seems to be a very good ferro rod. So, we're going to be keeping this. It's compact, it's small, it's easy to carry. Um, I do have two lighters in with this kit. Two wet fires. Um, this thing is junk. It used to be a uh, tablet, a military Esbit tablet, but it's leaked out, so it's garbage. We won't be replacing it either because i got the other fire starters. And another can opener. Looks like I only need one of those. I don't need two. So we're going to put that in there and that will be our can opener. Now, as for the wood-burning stove, you guys saw me review this. This is the Firebox Nano. An awesome little wood-burning stove. 
This thing just sits up right in here, unfolds easy. So that is what we will be using for a wood-burning stove, okay? And you guys have seen this. You guys saw me review it a while back. So those are my two stoves. Um, that way, if this thing does fail for some reason, if a little BRS tiny titanium stove fails, I do have something to fall back on. And it's not a big wood stove, so it's not super heavy, and it's not going to require me to cut down trees and branches and all sorts of crazy stuff. This is a twig stove. I can feed this with little twigs and leaves I find on the ground. So, that's this kit here. I'm going to kind of reorganize this kit, see how I can make it a little bit more uh, user-friendly. I'm probably going to change out that ferro rod um, just to something a little bigger. Um, it does work well, but I'm thinking about it now, and I'm thinking maybe I want something a little bit bigger, because I don't know how long I'm going to be starting fires out in the woods. So, maybe I want to switch it out. We're also going to change this out, too, and put it into this uh, roll-up. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to move this stuff out of the way so it doesn't block our, our view. And finish up real quick. Okay, coffee and Gatorade. Instant coffee. I already did that. I got a couple of these glow sticks in here. These are all fairly new except for this one. We'll test this one out, but I know these are brand new. Okay, uh, we got snacks. The snack bread, I'm going to get rid of because it's probably bad. This stuff doesn't last as long as the other stuff. These, if you know, you know. Oatmeal chocolate cookies. These are amazing. <laughs> okay. Um, these are like barter material. <laughs> and of course we have the food. Now you're probably wondering why I have a tarp, a sleeping bag, and a tent. Maybe I want to use this as my ground cover. If my ground is wet or whatever for my tent. I do have a uh, sleeping bag rolled up in here with the tent. I forget what tent it was honestly, but I know we reviewed it on the channel. I just forget which one it was. Um, I know the sleeping bag is a really decent one. It goes down to about 20 20 degrees. Again, out here, I'm not needing more than that. I live in the desert, so, you know, the coldest it's going to get is maybe 15, 17 degrees out. I'll be warm enough with that. Plus, I have ways of keeping myself warm with the other stuff. And it, worst comes to worst, I could even put this over it or the blanket. So, I'll be good with that, all right? Uh, so, that's pretty much it. Now, I do have N95s in here, and this is not something I added after the pandemic. I have carried N95s in my bags ever since 9-11. If you guys remember people running from the buildings... Uh, we're trying to get their faces covered, and, you know, unscrupulous retailers were selling them for, like, 50 bucks each. So I always carry a few extra in case I'm near some kind of environmental or man-made disaster, and I don't want to breathe in what's in the air. So I always carry a couple with me. I do have a plastic trash bag here. Very handy little thing. Uh, again, you know, could be used as anything, but uh, handy to have it. Water-resistant type thing. So, we're going to get through this stuff. I'm going to repack this. And I'm going to organize my fire kit and see how I can make that a little bit uh, more organized. And I'll bring you back when all that is finished. All right, so you see here what's re the remnants of my uh, first aid kit when I went through it. These are some of the things that weren't good. Uh, some of the things that amazingly were good, and I just opened up to check them, were the iodine pads. They're still good. Uh, this stuff had dried up. I always carry some kind of ore gel with me in case somebody has tooth pain. Uh, it dried up, so I've replaced it with actually a thing of clove oil in there. Uh, these pads were good. The quick and clean... So we kept them. These were all dried out, these antiseptic cleaning wipes. So pretty much, and this was empty. This was spray powder to seal. Plus I have a quick clot in there, medical crazy glue. I have so much other stuff in there that I really didn't need that. Another thing I want to replace, and this was in my bag separate, were these uh, wet ones. They're just expired, uh, according to them. <laughs> so we're going to take those out. I do keep a bar of soap in here, okay? And I do have some of these wet ones here. We're going to try one of these out to make sure they're still good. They're fairly new, though. Yep, they're still wet. Okay. So I'm going to be changing out the old ones because they expired in 2014. Okay, so these are good. We'll keep that. Uh, these are the older ones, expiration 4, oh, no, 417. And the other one was, I think, four, was it? Yeah, 414, 1014. So these expired. I got two brand new ones we're going to put in there. I just purchased these the other days because I figured those would be kind of old. So we will put them in here. Keep those hand and okay, bacterial wipes. And that's a good way to keep yourself clean while you're out in the woods. Believe me, you don't think about it. You think, I'm just worrying about surviving. I don't care if I'm clean or not. Then you get out there a little bit and you'll be like, oh God, I wish I could wash my hands. So trust me on that. You will want to do that. That's the old one we got rid of. So, all in all, everything else looks good. Uh, we're going to pack it back in there and see if we've saved some room. 
One of the things that I actually did not do, and I felt it was, I had to tell you, my first aid kit, okay, the big red one. Turns out I have a lot of stuff in here, and a lot of specialized stuff in here, too. Um, for me to put it in this little bag would not have worked, okay? I would have been missing out on stuff. I wouldn't have been able to see stuff. I mean, I have so much in here. I did go through and replace and reduce some of the extras, but I'm going to be keeping this bag, and we're going to use this for something else. I thought maybe because I have another first aid roll-up, um, that it would be convenient, but the problem I had with this was this is more geared towards tools, which is great. You know, make an awesome fire kit, an awesome little mini bug out bag type thing, but um, it's geared towards tools, so I can't see what's in there. This was clear as day. I could see everything in there. It's clear throughout the whole thing. So we're going to repack it and uh, give you my final thoughts on everything being packed up and ready to go. And yes, I did keep the old first aid bag because it's big enough. All right, let me clean up my mess, repack this up, and uh, give you my final thoughts on the video for today. All right, so it's fully packed up. Now, remember, this is a bare bones minimum, just what you need to survive for a few days outside of your house during a disaster or emergency. I tend to pack my bags for short-term emergency, okay? If I'm leaving my house and I know I'm never coming back, I have kits already set up in Rubbermaid tubs that I would take with me that has changes of clothing, Really, the only thing I need to grab is the rest of the valuables out of my safe. And over on the other side there, my backup radio system and all that ready to go. Other than that, I could pretty much evacuate very, very quickly. These bags, when I pack them, and this is a pretty complete bag, I would say. This is what I take with me in an emergency. Um, are fairly good for um, just short-term emergencies. You know, you get a knock on your door at 3 in the morning. The fire department's next door. House is on fire. They want you to evacuate your place. You know, probably not going to burn your house down, but just for safety. Um, you have to leave the area because of some kind of radiological disaster. You know, it could be a, a truck tipped over and sp spewing some poisonous gas, whatever. Short-term emergencies, weather-related even. Um, you know you're probably coming home and everything will be okay. And it's a short-term thing. And that's what I like bug out bags for. Now, I'm, I did try to close this. I want to give you a look. Everything is packed in there. I did use the smaller black roaring fire bag for a fire kit. Um, and we've moved some stuff around. I did reuse this bag, but I used the black one for just the fire kit. Uh, I mean, like I said, I kept this in here. Um, again, unfortunately, I just couldn't see the stuff in this bag. I couldn't see what I needed to see and what I needed to get. And this was able to have clear pockets here where I can see everything everywhere. Doesn't mean this is a bad product. Just means my idea didn't work for it. But I did use the smaller one, so that'll be very handy. Now, to put this together, and again, some people are going to jump on me for not having the first aid kit up top. The only reason I do that is because A, it doesn't fit, and B, this does open easily. See how it opens all the way like a clamshell? I can get at that first aid kit very, very quickly, should something be wrong. So, it's a little easier to get at. Let's throw it up there. I'm going to seal it up, stand it up, and we'll definitely see it's much lighter. All right, and there you go. It's fully packed up. And I will tell you something, there is another thing I'm considering down the road, and that is putting the, the sleeping bag on the bottom, but I haven't had very good luck with doing it this particular pack. I've tried a couple different straps, and it really hasn't uh, worked out for me. However, it stays nicely in there, and I really don't need anything more in here. It's not like I'm like, oh, I'm really hurting for space. I wish I could pack some more stuff in my bag. I'm actually trying to kind of wean down a little bit on it and make it a little bit lighter, so if I do have to carry this on my back, it's not all that bad. Um, I had switched over. Originally, this had MREs in it many years ago. MRE entrees. And I have switched over to freeze-dried food just because of the weight factor. You see how much food I can put in this using freeze-dried food. It's just so much lighter. And the only thing I did pull out of it was the older uh, freeze-dried uh, mac and cheese. We're going to try that. I guarantee you that probably is from 2001, 2002. And uh, we're going to try it and see if it's still good. But I did replace a couple of the freeze-dried entrees in there. And this is all nice and soft now because it's got that in it. We did put a better solar panel in it. We got rid of the, uh, the hatchet because I really don't need one out here. Um, I have a saw and I have a decent knife. We got a lighter knife in there that's a little bit of a better knife. Um, Schrade 
used to be a good brand, and over the years they kind of have gone down in quality. The particular shade that I had there, I forget the model number. They're like SCH41D, you know, whatever the heck. I forget the model number, but I know that they've had some problems with metal and snapping and problems with it. So I think it's a better idea to put a knife that I'm very, very confident in. Plus, it's a really nice knife, and it's way, way lighter. That shade was very, very heavy. So in all, I've taken about nine pounds out of the bag. Um, I have put more, more effective, better stuff in it. We've totally revamped the uh, charging system for the batteries. So now I don't have to worry about those batteries leaking. I just recharge them. Every few months, I take the bag out, put them in the charger. I'm good to go. I still have the original charger, the EBL original charger. So I'll just charge them up with that every few months. Just keep a, you know, keep a reminder on it. And I definitely need to be better about going through my bag because I had a lot of stuff in there, first aid-wise, that was kind of expired. The alcohol wipes, the, ben the benzocaine wipes, all that stuff, they were dry. So we definitely got those out. We got the baby wipes all upgraded and cleaned up. So I feel really good about it. I've lost some weight on it, you know, and I could carry it before. Um, I actually would use this on my treadmill from time to time to test myself out with it. And it's not super heavy now. I mean, I guess it's around 45, 50 pounds. It looks a lot more daunting than it really is. Most of this is just all freeze-dried food in there. So all in all, I think to myself, what do I need in an emergency? If I have to evacuate, what am I going to need? Well, I'm going to need a place to sleep. So I have my sleeping bag and tent. I'm going to need first aid stuff just in case I hurt myself. I'm going to need a radio to listen to to find out what's going on. And I'm going to also maybe need um, communication. So I could probably throw a ham rig on here somewhere. Just uh, slide it on there. And uh, all that can be done at the last minute. I have them out in my storeroom, right, ready to grab, but I'll edit at a moment's notice. A way to cook food and a way to start a fire. And I'm pretty much good. You know, I'm not going out to be entertained in a bug out location during an emergency or disaster. Now, I do have multiple bug out bags, okay? You don't need multiple bug out bags. If I'm leaving my house for a good long time, I'm taking all three of them. I have one that's even bigger than this and probably heavier. It's my kind of uh, response bag if I get called out with ham radio during an emergency. And uh, it, it has a little extra stuff in it as far as ham radio stuff. And that's why it's a little bit bigger. It also has a little more electronics in it. You know, I have a, a dipole antenna in it. I have stuff wrapped up. So I have a way to communicate when I get called out if there's an emergency for that. And I just grab that bag and go. But this is more of a quick you know, overnight emergency disaster type bag that you can put together. You see, you really don't need a ton of stuff. You don't need to have all this gear hanging off your bag and everything. You know, and you notice I don't have any firearm stuff in here because I don't know where I'm taking this. I even removed the old flare gun from in there because I'm not going to really be shooting off flares. Plus, in my vehicle, I have a pen flare gun. So if I am stuck somewhere and need to be rescued, I can use that as well. So, all in all, I'm happy with the repack. I'm glad I did it. I've been putting this off for a while. It's been a year since I packed it and cleaned it out and got some stuff in there. And I definitely am glad I got rid of that older entree, even though it's probably fine. It just makes me feel good to start it out with fresh stuff. So anyway, that's the video for today. I hope I gave you some ideas. I'm sure there'll be people in here saying, why are you carrying that? You should carry this or you should put that there. I get it. Everybody's bag is different. Everybody packs a bag differently. Let's face it. Have I ever needed one of these? Have I ever left my home knowing I'm not knowing where I'm going? No, I haven't. And I'm the first one to admit that. However, I do know what basic needs I need in an emergency. And that's pretty much it. Shelter, fire, food, water. And the water, by the way, I didn't show you this. I have a bladder back here, a water bladder, with a camel back ready to go. And basically what I do is fill that up. It's in here. Fill that up before I left and unzip it, fill it up, and go. I don't like leaving water in it because it can get, get bad on you and get funky on you. Um, I had one that I did that, and it really tasted nasty, so I don't do that anymore. I just I clean it out, put it away dry, once it's fully dry. So anyway, that's the video for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to check out all our links down below. We have our Amazon affiliate store down there. If you're interested in shopping around for some of the gear you saw in this video or on my channel, and pretty much everything is in there, including power stations, everything, food, everything. Also, don't forget, 15% off for using my link down below there, freeze-dried wholesalers. If you're interested in getting stocked up on freeze-dried food, and don't think that you can't use that kind of food for making entrees. I have an entree that I'm saving. I packed a year ago. We're saving to do it in a Mylar bag. We're going to see how well that held up. Don't think you can't use that for bug-out food. And the cool part is you can put together your own menus. You don't have to rely on what Mountain House tells you to eat. 
So if you like steak and potatoes, I can get some instant mashed potatoes and a couple of sirloin steaks in a bag, seal it up, and it's good for a year or two in a Mylar bag with an oxygen absorber. And you can use that for bug out food too as well. So don't forget that. The link saves you 15%. Don't forget our My Patriot Supply. That's preparewithiridium.com. Preparewithiridium.com. Last day of the month, get in on that special. $150 off a three-month food kit. And it's not expensive to begin with. I've seen them way more expensive than that. And we have our Thrive Life freeze-dried food store. If you're interested in checking out Thrive, don't feel obligated to uh, join anything. You can just go there, buy some food, and try it out. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.